My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today, we will learn how to make the behavior of entities uh, global to the whole game without having to rewrite the same code over and over again on every map. And we will continue with the same example as the two previous tutorials, um, which were about um, sensors that make the hero change layer thanks to this custom property and also dynamic tile dynamic tiles that have the property visible set to false and they are set to yeah invisible when the map starts and so far the behavior this behavior is scripted only locally to this map uh, we wrote this script in the previous tutorial if you if you remember and it was already a nice thing because you could now add some new sensors and dynamic ties to this map with uh, these properties and you don't have to script them because yeah your script your code automatically already works for all dynamic tiles that have this property and all sensors that have um, that property but it's not ideal yet because it's still only on this map so if you want the same stuff on other maps uh, well you have to for now you have to duplicate code and to put the same kind of code in in the script of that other map so today we will learn how to make it uh, more global and there are multiple ways to do that actually um, so first let's have a look at the code of last time um, maybe we want to refactor a little bit um, this here because it's yeah here we get all sensors and we get their properties and if they have the property we assign the unactivated function but to make it, it more global uh, it will be a little bit hard this way so it's actually easier and I think also cleaner to do a function uh, that we will call for instance sensor unactivated and all, all sensors will have this function and this unactivated function will get I will copy paste these two lines we get the property in, in if the property exists then we do hero set layer oops okay hero set layer uh, that and otherwise we do nothing and all of this can be removed and replaced by just assigning that function value to our sensor Uh, sorry, sensor dot unactivated equals this function above. It's um, it's also probably better uh, for from a performance point of view because we create the function only once instead of declaring a function inside a loop. It was it was a little bit weird. Uh, so let's see if it still works it does however there is an important difference with this new approach is that all sensors now have the function because we assigned this function unconditionally to all sensors of the map so if the map has some other completely unrated sensors let's say there is a cutscene that that's plays here when we get here cutscene sensor I will copy the name back to our map script what happens if we declare cutscene sensor unactivated and now we imagine that we have some map specific code doesn't matter let's let's just play a sound for this example and here it will actually work Oops, <laughs> no, it won't. I I cannot pass. 
Let's, let me move that bush or that tree. And in, it's more, it works only because um, if you remember functions in Lua, creating a function in Lua is exactly, uh, it's just an assignment, it's just a value assignment. You assign a value of type function to an object. So when you do that, you, assigned, you assign this value of type function declared above. Uh, to the unactivated field of your sensor and when you do that well you also assign a new value of type function to uh, to constant sensor unactivated uh, it's just that it's a different one so whatever you assign here will override what was assigned before so it works because here we assign initially to all our sensors uh, this default unactivated let's say and then some specific sensors are still allowed to uh, override this and define their own unactivated. And then it will uh, override the previous one. So it only works because they are, they are declared in the correct order. So it's a little bit fragile. Here I moved the cutscene sensor unactivated above and it no longer works. So if you want to be safer, you could do if sensor unactivated is not nil, then you assign the default. And if you do that, then the order no longer matters. And that will make it much easier and much safer to uh, refactor code. Oops, I meant if it is currently nil, then I assign the default. So if it was already defined, I should not override it. Okay, now it works. Uh, and we should always test that the other ones still work. Okay, I'm above the bridge. That's a good sign. Perfect. So for now, everything is still local to our, our map, but um, before we refactor the code, it's important to understand these subtleties. Um, let's make the mistake. I mean, it's not really a mistake as long as you keep the order correct, but uh, we want to see what happens uh, Yeah, if we, if we don't make this check. So here it works because Again, cutscene sensor is declared after. But once we refactor the code, maybe we will have some trouble and we will see. Um, okay. So, I, um, now I have a second map. Uh, by the way, one more detail. It's possible to have actually avoid this issue I just described by assigning multiple events to the same, uh, multiple functions to the same event. And, um, yeah, because by default it, it overrides, but um, the, we have a script called multi-events that actually allows to um, assign multiple functions to an event. But um, we are not using this for now, we just learn the basics first. Um, okay, so we have a second map, and maybe on that second map, oops, this one, I want a dis default destination here. So let's create it. Uh, default, yes. Okay, and maybe on this ma new map, uh, we also have this kind of uh, construction. Copy, paste. So I want it here, but the wall is is too too tall. So let's move it. Okay, and now we have the exact same. I just copy pasted the this and I didn't script anything. So obviously it will not work. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna cheat and put the destination here just to make the testing quicker. 
Uh, layer zero. So if I go there, oops, it doesn't work. I am right now under the platform that is supposed to be invisible and I cannot go up. So that's because we have this sensor with this key, but uh, with this property, but we do nothing about this property on, on that map. Same with the dynamic tiles, visible is false, but we don't have any code that uh, handles this at all. The code was only done in bridge.lua, which is the, ma the script of only this map. Uh, okay, so how do we make it global then? Um, one way to do so is to um, move the code that um, handles dynamic ties and sensors to a separate file. Um, let's do it in here, create a script. We can call this um, maybe dynamic tile manager that Lua so as always when we require a script the script will return a table and that table will contain one or more functions so we just want a function that takes the map as a parameter and will initialize all dynamic tiles of that map so basically this code that we have here in map on started of our bridge map we will cut it and paste it in this script and we do have a map variable which is actually our parameter here so when we call this we want to pass the map and that should work so instead of map on started or maybe inside map on started we can call map initialize uh, no sorry <laughs> I need to require this script yeah so local dynamic time manager require scripts slash dynamic time manager and when the map starts I do uh, initialize map because I called my function here in dynamic time manager I called this function initialize and it takes the map as a parameter okay so so far I just refactored the code that handles dynamic ties and it's now in a separate file so all maps are free to use it but it, they still need uh, a few lines um, so, but, but let's also do it for the sensors and then we'll see how to improve that. Sensor manager.lua. Same thing, we declare a table, we return it, and we declare a function sensor manager initialize map. This function will do um, everything that we have here. Cut, paste, and now we have. So we declare the function sensor on activated. Here we will have a problem with the variable hero, um, but let's see. Let's see why. And yeah, back to our bridge map. Now we only have very specific code uh, code specific to that map and no code at all I mean we have the initialization code still but we'll see in just a second how to also improve that okay let's also initialize our sensors when the map starts we do that but the only remaining code in our map script is code that should really stay specific to that map. So that cuts in 
only exists in, in this map. We don't want to make it uh, general to the whole game. Unlike dynamic ties and sensors. Okay. Um, so we we'll have multiple issues here and I already mm, pretty much mentioned some of them. First, can I go under the bridge? Above the bridge? Oops, no. So I have an error here in Sensor Manager. Attempt to index global hero, which is a nil value. So error message error messages are often pretty clear in Lua, line 8. I have a variable called hero and I never declared it. So why did it work in bridge.lua? So the script of that map. It's because in map, map scripts, um, you can also access all entities just by their names. So you implicitly have access, uh, for example, this chest, okay, it doesn't have a name, but <laughs> if it had a name, you could uh, access it from the bridge script just by typing its name. So like a, like a variable. And the hero is an entity just like the rest. And it's called hero, that, that's why it was working. But here, no, this is not a map script. This is just a script from the point of view of the engine. And um, yeah, so you don't have the variable called hero, but you can easily still access the hero with uh, map get hero. So no problem here. Okay, cool. I can still pass under my bridge, above my bridge, so the dynamic ties and the sensor are working. And here this one is not working. Why? Because we forgot to paste the initialization code in our second map. So outside castle, copy paste. And now I'm enabling the features about dynamic tiles and sensors also to that second map. To that second map. This time it should work. Yay! But what is not working is... Uh, maybe I want to move my destination back to... Oh, okay, no, sorry. What is not working is probably my local sensor here. My cutscene here, it, it no longer has an effect. And that's because since I moved the code, um, first the script is executed, so we assign unactivated to cutscene sensor here. And later the map actually starts. So this code is executed later. Uh, which means that this unactivated is actually overridden by the other one. So we could move around the codes to make it sure that it's called in the correct order, but it's way safer to just, like I said in the beginning, uh, be more careful when we assign an unactivated event to all our sensors. We just want to do it for sensors that that don't have one already. So we put this one by default unless uh, something was already set specifically. Okay, it still works, yay! So it's, it's starting to look quite good already. Um, one thing that we of course want to improve is that even though we no longer have to make um, to script anything for each new sensor or each new invisible tile uh, in our maps, we still have to mm, think about to not forget about initializing every map with these features. So bridge.lua has this code Dynamic type, uh, sorry, <laughs> outside, outside castle. Lua also have it, has it. And uh, is there a way to really have no code at all and to make it automatic for all maps? 
actually yes there are two ways at least uh the straightforward way the most straightforward way is to use uh a more clever event than map unstarted there is actually a game on map changed event uh, so we can call it in our game manager for instance because this is the place where we create the game so game manager dot lua and actually in previous tutorials we already have in defined some behavior on our game but here we can add game on map changed so whenever the hero enters a new map including the very first map of when you run the game uh, well guess what we want to do that initialization code dynamic tile manager and sensor manager initialize so I will copy this from bridge.lua to game manager.lua with the correct indentation and I just need to require both scripts so I will also copy that so I hope I was not too fast but now every time I create a game I also initialize it with this event on map changed so whenever the a map will be started uh, we will initialize the dynamic ties and the sensors to react to our custom properties and that's really 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 nice because now we no longer need anything at all in our maps except map specific code so that's what that one is really it's really justified to to keep your cutscene uh, code inside your map script same for the second map we no longer need to do anything about dynamic ties and sensors so uh, that's cool we can also remove these two lines if the map the map script is really empty and um, actually when I ha whenever I have a, <laughs> a completely empty map script I'm happy because it means that the code is is clean is it's factorized uh, in 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 generic places uh, but we need to test all of this because we made a lot of changes so again I need to test that I can pass under the bridge I can, can climb here above the bridge and also in the other map that this climbing also works so yes and uh, let's don't forget our cutscene sensor okay we heard the sound perfect so um, one drawback or one risk let's say is that we are defining when we are defining events like on map changed but also just on like a sensor on activated uh, I, I already mentioned that the last one wins in case multiple places define the same event so the safer way would be to use multi events.lua but I think that's out of scope of this uh, tutorial but it's nice to to know that it exists we will definitely make a tutorial about a tutorial about uh, multi events because if you have some other scripts like your herd or I don't know anything that wants to detect the map changes um, it will override this one if that script is called later or maybe it's that one we that will override the other one so um, just be careful for now we we learn the basic way and we learn to be careful with this uh, okay and the second remark is that there is a second way to define very global behavior uh, of our entities uh, using meta tables actually we will learn that uh, also later it will uh, allow to just define an unactivated event for example on all sensors of well all sensors ever basically <laughs> so you you will no longer have to detect when the map change and to initialize a specific map you you can just actually with meta tables 
um, configure like the sensor type to actually already have the event unactivated that you want. All right, so meta tables are very powerful but quite advanced and it's very much necessary to first understand the, the basic and uh, like this code to later um, get get a better feeling about um, things like multi events and uh, meta tables but uh, yeah we will see that in later tutorials um, what i've explained here is of course of course not specific to sensors or to tiles dynamic tiles that we want to make invisible um, any kind of entities can be configured that way they all can have user properties they all can be accessed from uh, this kind of code uh, when the map starts and so you can we, we just took the example of dynamic tiles that we wanted to make invisible and of sensors that uh, one, we wanted them to to move the layer the hero one uh, layer up or down but uh, yeah any kind of entity we can of course be configured this global way like i don't know uh, if you want all uh, npcs of your game to initially have a random movement the, you can do it the same way uh, in game manager you call another script npc manager initialize and your npc manager will create an initial movement to to all npcs of the new map that's uh, that's possible uh, okay i hope you you get the idea again the the main goal of all of this is to allow, allow you to create new maps and to just copy paste uh, entities without having to script them over and over again if they have the same behavior um, yeah, uh, if you have any question, please join our Discord and we will help. Thank you all for watching and that's all for now.